Hello my lovely photographer, Pat K here, back with another video. Today we're on location here in the lovely Italian Dolomites, and I've got two special guests with me, TK North and Mitch Lali, both of my friends that I've been traveling with here, and both professional photographers as well. We're going to be giving you guys five essential landscape photography tips that we're going to be using here in the Dolomites for sure. So let's get into the video. All right, so tip number one is all about location scouting and planning. And this is so, so key. And it can really make the difference between a successful landscape photography shot and not. The more time you spend researching your shot, the better it will be when you get on location, the better your shot will be, the better your experience will be overall when you're shooting it. Some things to consider are time of day, the weather, the angle of your shot, and even stuff like hike distance. For example, here in the Dolomites, everything that looks so close together on on the map but actually driving to all these different locations can take a lot longer than expected because of how all of the roads wind around the mountains and even then the mountains can be a little bit deceiving because when you get to a location they're so high and so the sun may or may not even be lighting your subject and your overall scene so to help with all of this i use a combination of google maps google earth and an app called photo pills for Google Maps, I use it to get around and estimate the time of arrival. For Google Earth, I use that to envision shots before I get to the location so that I can have a good vision of what I want out of that particular scene and so that I can actually prepare myself mentally for the shoot. And then for photo pills, I use that to accurately gauge the sun and what that's doing and what the timings are in that respect. And also using the AR function to determine exactly where the sun will be in the location that I'm at. All right, so tip number two is really consider and think about your framing. Now that can often mean taking multiple shots of the same thing. When we take landscapes, often we're just trying to fit in as much as possible and sometimes think less about the framing, but it's still really important to come up with a compelling composition. So there is obvious compositions like the rule of thirds, for example. However, it is always good to experiment and play around with different compositions. So this can be something like using something interesting in your foreground or even placing someone in your landscape image to give it a bit of scale. Overall, take multiple shots of the same thing. You can use different lenses, take a nice wide shot somewhere in the middle and then use a tele lens to get a like, nice tighter shot to get a little bit more detail. Overall, if you take a few different frames, when it comes to editing, you might find you like a totally different frame to what you liked on the day. So it's always good to have plenty of different options. <sighs> okay, tip number three is embrace failure and adapt. You know, in landscape photography, we're so often against nature or competing with nature, or even working with nature. But that means there's so many different variables that you can come up against and so many different obstacles that you may potentially have to face. So embrace that change and embrace the idea that things may have to adapt and you may have to change your plans because you know, sometimes nature has its own idea. I love the idea that in landscape photography specifically, you can come back to a location time and time again and continually get different styles of shots and different types of shots with different weather, you know, different cloud patterns, different light, etc., etc. And so every single opportunity is a chance to learn, to grow and to adapt and to embrace failure in that way. For example, here in the Dolomites, there are so, so many wonderful and beautiful lakes to photograph and to see. But because it's, you know, the middle of winter, unfortunately, all of the lakes are frozen over. And so there's not that much to see, or at least we had to change a lot of our plans unfortunately but with that we've also had the opportunity to adapt to go to different locations to location scout to different areas and we've ended up with a lot of off-the-cuff or you know unplanned lovely shots that we've ended up getting as well tip number four is there are no perfect settings for landscape photography this is true in photography in general but especially for landscape photography, there is no cheat code to plug into your camera to get a really nice looking photo. So a question that I get asked a lot is, what settings do you use for landscape photography or what settings do you use for portrait photography? And the answer is always, it depends. Your goal as a photographer should be to understand the exposure triangle. So that means
means understanding exactly what shutter speed, aperture, and ISO do, and how they all relate to one another. And then using those settings to create an image that expresses your vision. Two experienced landscape photographers could go to the exact same location, use completely different settings, and both come away with amazing professional looking photos. So for example, recently when shooting a landscape location, I used a slow shutter speed to draw the viewer's eye into a photo. You can also use a low f-stop number to draw the viewer's attention to certain parts of the photo or a high f-stop number so that you can ensure that you get the entire image in focus. And the last and final tip is to detach yourself from tripods. Now, I might cop a little bit of flack for that because, you know, they say that a tripod is a landscape photographer's best friend, but sometimes it can also be its worst enemy. Sometimes we can get stuck down the rabbit hole of just focusing on the one image and the best image that we think is right there in front of us. And this can be detrimental because, you know, 10 meters down the road, a little bit higher, a little bit lower, you know, just around the corner could be a better composition waiting for you right there. And so it helps to get to your location early and again, scout and plan really successfully so that you can envision all of these different compositions ahead of time and you can scout all of these compositions early so that you can then pick and choose between the best potential ones. So for example, here in Lago de Brez, we are here at a lovely lake and behind the camera, there's just an absolutely gorgeous vista, but it's the middle of winter and unfortunately the lake is completely frozen over. And so the normal shot that you might be looking for here isn't really available to us. However, just, you know, 40 meters down that way, there is a bit of the lake that is unfrozen and it's just absolutely still. And the water provides the most gorgeous reflection that we were able to find just by walking down a little bit further. And so it's worth detaching yourself from your tripod and just walking around and scouting around a little bit more because I mean, after all, you're in a landscape and you're out in nature, so get out there and explore. All right, we're gonna get out of here because it's really cold. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please go and check out my friends TK North and Mitch Lali over on YouTube and on Instagram. I'll see you on the next video, but until then, get out there and make something that matters. Peace. All right, let's go. Done. Oh.